First, I'm going to start over. What is a gene? A gene is a region found in the DNA. It contains a promoter that promotes the gene. It stores hereditary information such as eye color and disease trait, and also contains exons and introns. This is the arrangement of the gene. You have the promoter up front, then you have the coding sequence EI, EI, for exons, introns, and so on. Exons are the expressed, and introns are not expressed. Now I'm going to for central dogma. Central dogma is transcription of DNA into mRNA, then the transcription of mRNA into protein, and the protein is like the trait. I'm going to go over in depth. I'll show you the diagram now. This is a mammalian cell. Here's the nucleus. In the nucleus, you can see the double stranded DNA with building blocks ATCG for adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. The double stranded DNA will be trans transcribed into single stranded mRNA. The first stage of mRNA contains both excites and introns, the pink part. The building blocks for mRNA are ACUCG and T will be replaced to you, which is your cell. The second stage of mRNA only contains exons. The introns were deleted of the mRNAs, and now the mRNA will exit the nucleus and enter a cytoplasm, will be translated by a protein. And then the protein will make up the, and then the protein will give us like the trait. Now, I, I'm sure that many of you have wondered why we use mine as a model organism. Well, mice are very, very important, very useful as a model organism because they they can adopt new genes and incorporate it into their genome. Since the 70s, scientists are able to add and perform gene replacement and modifications such as gene Nakanaka and RNA silencing. It's cheaper, smaller, and shorter has a shorter lifespan, meaning that you can store it a lot, you can buy buy a lot of it, and and since it has a shorter lifespan, you can see the results quicker than others that take a long time. Something very important about the mice also that the genome is complete. We know the sequence for every gene, but not the function. It's not necessarily the function, but we know the sequence. 99% of genes are homologous to human, meaning that they're with the mice is similar to human. Now, why do we study gene Nakanaka? Gene not can not just study the function of a gene through looking at the phenotype. This method can lead to a therapeutic approach, meaning we learn about diseases and how to cure or treat treat diseases. First, I'm going to go over gene knockout. Gene knockout is a removal of a gene out of an organism to study the function of the gene. We can study the phenotype to see what happens to knockout mice, for example. Methods I'm going to go over today are homology recombination and Crelox P. When performing homologous recombination, you need targeting construct, which is the gene that you're going to insert. This gene can be a functional gene or non-functional gene. It can be a fluorescent gene, also, also known as GFP, with, which tells you that the location of the inserted gene or an antibiotic resistant gene. Then you need to know target chromosome, which is the one you're going to knock out and insert this one. So here, as you can see in the diagram, this is the gene. And as you can see, it says HM, which is homologous, meaning that it's it's the same. Homologous meaning that uh, it has this flank DNA, which is similar, and without having this flank DNA, which is similar to the, to the one that's going to be knocked out, the combinations cannot take place. So they'll switch places, and the marker will be inserted, and this will be knocked out. Now I'm going to go over conditional conditional knockout, also known as Prelux P. It's called conditional knockout because it, it targets the gene in specific tissue. In this method, you'll make two transgenic mice, one that contains cell-specific promoter, in this case, heart cells, which we attach to Cre. And Cre is basically a gene that codes for Cre enzyme, which targets and cuts the LOX P site in the DNA. Then you made it to the other mouse, which contains the LOX P site. The progeny, which is the baby, will contain both Cre and Lox P. Then, as you can see here, as, as, as I said before, the Cre will cut the Lox P site only in heart cells because it's attached to 
heart, heart cells promoter, which is only expressed in heart cells. And although LOXP is present in a lot of, this, a lot of other cells, CRE only cut in heart cells. Now I'm going to go over gene knocking. Gene knocking is when a new gene is introduced into the organism genome. Methods I'm going to go over today are DNA microinjection and retrovirus. In DNA microinjection, a new sequence is introduced into the, into the organism. First, you need to have the to knock in gene cluster, which will have the promoter, which promotes the sequence they're going to infect. Then you take the, the eggs from the super ovulated female mouse, which was injected with, with the, you, then you take the super ovulated female mouse, and then you take the eggs out of the, out of the mouse. Then you fertilize it with sperm cells. Then you micro inject that sequence into it. Then you implant it into the mouse, the pseudo, pseudo pregnant mouse. Pseudo pregnant mouse. It's called pseudo pregnant mouse because it was made into a sterile male mouse, meaning that. It, it cannot have babies, so she, but she's thinking that she's pregnant. The chimeric progeny will be born, and they'll contain the the they'll contain only an insert of the gene, positive and negative. Meaning this is basically an insert. This isn't happening, so it's positive and negative. If you're on DNA analysis and you see that it only contains one portion of the, the sequence that you injected, to be able to get the homozygous sequence, which is the homozygous trait, which is the sequence that you injected, you need to make two chimeric mouse. As you can see in the Punnett square, the possibility that you're going to get the homozygous for, for the sequence that you injected will be 25%. For heterozygous, it will be 50%. And for homozygous, for not having any insert at all, it will be 25%. Then you run the DNA analysis again to see which one contains if it says a heterozygous or homozygous. Another method you can use is retrovirus or the viral or the viral approach in general. Before I said that central dogma is DNA being transcribed into a RNA and then translated into protein. Well, how the retrovirus works is that it reverses the central dogma process. It'll go from mRNA into DNA. In this approach, scientists take away the deadly mRNA from a retrovirus and replace it with a healthy mRNA, and reverse transcription will take place and it will be incorporated, the new DNA will be incorporated into your genome. Sometimes, inserted genes can, other, can disrupt genes. So, cycling E would disrupt cycling D1. The phenotype will be neurological defects of the realities of the primary tissue. The non-phenotype will be restoration of normal Practical use of knock and knock out. In forest genetics, you randomly knock out the gene out of an embryo. If the embryo cannot go, grow hair, you assume that that, that that gene is responsible for growing hair. And you sequence that gene. It's not sure yet that that, that gene is coding for growing hair. So to be able to test this, you do in reverse genetics, you insert that same sequence into another mouse to see if it grows hair. And if it does, then the mouse will be rescued meaning that will go back to, to, to the normal phenotype. You guys know that KFC genetically engineered fast chickens? Yeah. You know what it looks like? Yeah. Oh, it looked like this. <laughs> and do you know how, and you know how they, it's, it's, you know how they got it to be featherless? They not they yeah, they knocked out the gene that's responsible for growing feathers. <laughs> so why is the technique so important? Well, first, we have understanding on the organism. The genomes are the genes. We know that now we know the functional genes. For example, if you have disease, we know about it and we can cure or the disease. And like I said, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Omar Mata, and today I'll introduce you to Gene Nakanata, a technique uses to function with genes. 